Hey everybody, this is Mitch. So today's topic has to do with what do you do with what is left after you have a project that you've cut. So there are several different things that you can do both after you process and while you're processing, etc., to make use of the space and things. We're going to cover the physical part and then go back to the computer and do some of the work in the software here in just a minute. But let's kind of go through things as, as we say. And so what you have in front of you is about a year's worth of cutoffs. It's actually not because I've already done a bunch of this work myself. Anyway, but what we have here is we have large pieces that are for from a project. Then we have smaller pieces that are semi-useful. Then we have some cutoffs, what I call drops. So these were actually cut off of uh, a project I was working on. And these are the actual parts that were cut and that I don't need. So basically what I was doing was creating uh, a jig. And so basically this is the inside that was cut off. They're semi-useful. Here are some other drops that are just little pieces. I'm not sure why I even save these. Maybe they'll be useful to somebody, maybe they won't. And then finally, we have a collection of drops that is semi-useful. So here's some circles. This is from my uh, project to do the poker chip storage there. And then other things like testing out mat stuff, things like that. So these are all just small shapes of, that were cut out and left over from things that probably what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get a collection of these at the end of the year, beginning of the year, I'll just put them up on Facebook marketplace for cheap or free or something like that. Just so somebody else can have a chance to play with stuff like that. So that's what all this is. So the idea here is how do we get to where we don't store the junk? but we can make use of smaller pieces left over because like here's a piece right here this is a perfect example so i had to cut i think this came off of the poker chip or the casino chip project where i needed a large piece cut out i ended up with this l so not very useful so what i really need to do is i need to cut it right here to make two pieces and that way i can put one on top of each other and they store faster and better like that so the way that I have done this, and again, this is all the post-processing stuff, and I've changed the way I've, I've done it. We'll cover a little bit later. The easiest way to take care of this is just with a pair of diagonal cutters. So this is three millimeter plywood. If you have something thicker, it may be different, but you can just literally cut these like this and then just keep cutting. And what I'm after here is there are actually two different things of this. Now with this one, they're all the same. So again, what I'm doing is I hate to waste any product, any kind of wood. So these are small strips, okay? Maybe people that do models or trains or things can use this. So what I do with these is I put them in a box with a bunch of the other stuff that I've cut off like this. And again, at the end of the year, beginning of the year, whatever, I will bundle all this stuff and give it away to somebody. This, is, this can be cut with the diagonal cutters. It's a bit much. I'm just going to use a bandsaw. If you don't have a, a bandsaw, a regular saw works as well. What do you do with something like that? Well, in all honesty, all of this really de deter is determined by your time. Okay? What I'm doing here is a complete waste of time, but I, it makes me feel better. Just That's just the way it is right there. Okay? If you are running a business, this is a piece of trash right here. This is what I call chemical which is what we get when we do all this other stuff and we end up with a box of this. This is the cutoffs from in between all these little things. And that is my killing pile for the winter for when we hopefully have some cool temperatures here in North Texas and I have something to put in the fire pit to start it up. But a lot of this, you can create circles or other geometric shapes to, to be used for a part of your craft. That's still a lot of good usable wood, but quite honestly, it's, it may not be worth your time. So consider any of that when you look at that. So, you know, right now I'm saving it, but I could just as easily just throw it in the trash or throw it in the, in the scrap bin and, and be done with that. This one's a bit bigger and much more surface area. And so this would be a perfect example of why I would keep something like this. And again, this one, we just cut the stuff. This is all kindling right here because I can't think of a use why somebody would need something like that. And then what we would do is we would take this over to the bandsaw, cut it right there, cut it right there. And then maybe if I want to trim that edge up as well and make that go. Okay. So again, the idea is you're going to end up with a bunch of pieces, maybe like this, 
or like this here where you have this and this. So there's a lot of good usable space like that. So I can cut round things or square things or other parts out of that. It's a bit more work to do something like that, but, but it does work. So again, the idea is to remove all the stuff that you don't need and just keep what you do need. And if you can find a secondary purpose for some of this stuff, like one of the drops that was in here was this cross that I had done for, for another project for one of my wife's nieces. And there's nothing wrong with this at all. It's just, I have no use for it because my project is done with, but all the little pieces are the little drops over there in the plastic thing. And then some of these are useful because like that's a heart. So people that do jewelry could use some of these little drops if they wanted. That's why they would be in something like that. Somebody could use this as a necklace or something, or even just this came, this went on a, a bendable box, wooden box thing. And so, yeah, so see, this is perfectly good. There's nothing wrong with that. So again, it's just what you could do with this. Okay, so the idea was if we just want to remove all the stuff that we don't need, clean it up, decide if we want it. Some of these pieces are just, you know, too small to do anything with. Here's a piece of birch that I had painted for a coaster holder. Do I need that? I mean, there's one, two, three realistically big enough pieces to keep. The rest of it is all honesty trash and I can just throw away or throw in the, in the scrap gun to the, the killing pile. These are the same. This is that rosewood from the X-Tool Select. It's just a MDF with a more or less a couple outside sheets of some kind of plastic that makes it look like wood. That's useful if I want to make some, some kind of decoration or something on another project. This came out of a, um, of a sign for, uh, for teachers appreciation. So anyway, so this is how you handle stuff after you've done with it. So again, the idea here is I had all of this stuff completely taking up two of the drawers in my, my laser town cabinet. And most of it is absolutely dead space. So what I'm going to do this weekend is I'll go through this, cut things off, run through the bandsaw. And then what I'll end up with is just a bunch of smaller pieces that I, I can use for stuff. And that will take up much, much less storage. Okay. So let's, uh, let's pause here. We'll jump over to the computer into Xtool XES, and I'll show you a tip that I got from a lady on the, one of the Xtool Facebook groups that is actually what I started using and how you can use it too. So I'll meet you there. So we talked about what to do with the things after we've cut them to clean them up and just make them where they stick up less space and things. So let's talk about how to prevent that from happening so we can actually do it while we're doing a production run. So here is a box that I'm creating here. It's got three dividers and just made out of three millimeter Baltic birch, which is what I have loaded in the, in the laser there. And this is the X-Tool M1, by the way. And so what I'm going to do is here are all the parts that I need for my, um, for my box. And so typical thing here, I'm just going to take some of these and try to maximize the space that I'm using. That way I don't, uh, I use as, as little as possible. So that may be as good as I can get on this one. Actually, let me move that one down a little bit because it's a little bit too close for my, my taste. It's not that I don't trust the way things look, but I don't. Okay, so we've got a couple things we can do here, but what I'm really going to do is I'm going to draw a couple of lines to uh, give me some cuts, extra cuts that are not related to the box. So I'm just going to start here and I'm going to make that go all the way across over there. Make sure that is indeed a cut. Then I'm going to zoom in here a bit and I'm going to create another line that goes from this one down here. And pan over a hair and I'm oh, sorry make that one cut as well and then do another, a final line and I'm going to go from here all the way over to the left hand side there and make that a cut as well so when I go out when I zoom out what I'm seeing here is I've got a um, just a a line that's circling this basically encasing everything so what I'm going to end up with is um, it's going to call all the parts out like it normally would and then it's going to cut this border around it so from here to there to there and what that's going to do is it's pretty much going to make this just a series of just cutoffs that I can just throw away 
and then what it'll leave it's not exactly a rectangle but it's close enough and so this big piece here will be left over and it'll be ready to use um, out of the box so I've got this idea from a lady who who posted up on um, one of the Facebook groups for Xtool, and I'm like, why am I not doing this? It's so simple, and you don't think of the simple things sometimes, and you end up with like what I did with this a foot tall stack of cutoffs that look just like this, where there's lots of parts, and you couldn't use half the area, and it's just ugly and things like that. And we'll get into cleaning that up here in a minute. Okay, so I got everything cut up, so let's go through what we have here. We got a bunch of little pieces for people to uh, do art and craft with, whatever. Some smaller pieces that I, I'm going to save for myself for a while. The probability of these ending up in the giveaway pile is high. And then I have some drops there. Those didn't change. And then I have a bunch of just different size cutoffs here, as you can see. And then this is all trash. So that's going to be kindling for the fire. I'll probably just chunk these because there's, there's just not enough. It's enough there to, to justify the time to cut it apart, uh, to be quite honest, or there's other things wrong with it. Not that there's anything wrong. Like if you needed something, that's perfectly good. I mean, that's a if you need to make some stars or circles or something like that, that is absolutely perfect. Okay. So anyway, so this is it. So this is what I ended up with. So I'll load this back in my cabinet and see how much space I have left over after that. Okay, let's take a walk over to Laser Town. And as you can see here, we have two drawers full of cutoffs or junk, depending on how you look at them. Put them back in place. Also got drawers with my normal plywood in them. And some other plywood and things like that. And then the storage on the left-hand side has kind of my bigger stuff or my other things, a lot of cardboard in there because I use a lot of cardboard for prototypes. So anyway, so that's one of the ways that you can help maximize your stuff if you got the time, if you want to spend the time. Otherwise, you know, just chunk it in the bin and use it for firewood. Thanks for watching.